Hello everybody and welcome to this quick LD301 Smart Pressure Transmitter tutorial. In here you are going to learn how to connect with other devices, the installation from the field to the control room, and how the signal flows inside the transmitter sensing the sensor to the field line. This video is sponsored by Smart Learning Center in Houston, Texas. To connect the LD301 is indeed very simple. All you need is a twisted pair going from the power supply to the transmitter. And by the way, you can easily reach up to one mile without problems. Uh, for instance, it's recommended to use a shield, a twisted pair, instead of regular twisted pair for long distances or noise paths. Uh, in this way, uh, communication will be more stable. The 250 ohms resistor is necessary to make sure that you can plug a heart communicator or an interface to the computer with a heart interface, of course. Now, from this simple loop, you can add other devices uh, in series. Uh, remember, you need to turn off uh, the power supply uh, according to the classification of your area. And if you want to add a controller, you're going to proceed in the same way. Cut the loop, put the controller. And if uh, a hard communicator needs to go in the line, uh, you can select any place in the line and it is installed in parallel with the line. Okay, very simple. And in this way, you can do your configuration or observe parameters or variables. Okay, now taking the connection to the control room. Let's think first in a pressure transmitter in the field. In this case, we have a smart differential pressure transmitter and we are applying P1 and P2 on the other outlet. So the output of the transmitter will be the difference P1 minus P2, considering it's a differential module. If the transmitter is connected alone in the loop, it will be providing a 4 to 20 signal according to the configuration and on top of that we have the heart communication signal used to acquire variables, perform maintenance and set up the transmitter configuration. Okay. Now we have a separation to the control room and finally we can add a hard interface that will be connected to computers in the control room and that will make it. So this is a single transmitter in the field connected to the control room. Note that all the electronics that support the transmitter operation is in a panel in the control room. Okay. Okay. Now let's under, understand the function blocks for the LED301. In this way, we'll see how the signal coming from the pressure sensors goes to the hard 4 to 20 milliamps line. Okay. So you see the sensor. There is a cut of the sensor here. This is a capacitance sensor. Actually, it has two capacitors with a common diaphragm in the middle, and each red line takes the face of one capacitor to the outside to be measured. According to pressure, the diaphragm moves and the capacitance on each side changes. And with that calculation, we can conclude how much is the pressure. Okay. So the first thing it does is read the capacitances. And there is an analog input function block that does the filtering of the signal and uh, also has a factory characterization that will compensate the variations of reading according to temperature. And 
finally there is a pressure calibration so the sensor is teached to read to convert that capacitance to an actual pressure and this is all kept inside the memory in the sensor okay so at this point you know how much is the actual pressure and this pressure is what we call pressure in engineering units and it's going to be according to engineering units that you set up in the transmitter now when we have an engineering units pressure it can be converted in percentage the percentage is based on your use range so you configure the range that will be your zero percent and the pressure is going to be your 100 percent and based on that range and the pressure he's measuring he will have the first percentage variable okay so this is the initial thing not the final thing that you gonna see in the transmitter okay so this is an internal thing different from this one the pressure is there is calculated and is kept you can see it anytime but this first percentage goes to another process that is a function that you can choose as a linear meaning you don't do any change meaning that the first percentage is going to be transferred to the second percentage so unless you extract a square root or a square root of the third or the cubic or of the uh, fifth and then it will be another value here those are based on things uh, that have physical functionality depends on your application now after you have the second percentage value you still can just bypass and go ahead or go through a table with 16 points so you have 16 x and y in percentage so every percentage that you see here can be converted in another percentage so for instance you're measuring uh, the pressure in a tank with the objective to really determine uh, the volume of the tank so let's say if the tank is spherical uh, if the fluid is in the middle of the tank then the pressure is the 50 percent of uh, from the bottom to top but if it's in a 25 percent of the height 25 percent in a cylindric uh, will not reflect uh, 25 percent of the volume is way less so you're gonna need to do some linearization table or compensation table for that okay so if you're gonna use the table or not uh, it's like switching this and uh, the final signal that comes here is what we call the process variable in percentage and this is what you see you don't see the first percentage the secondary percentage of course unless you have using no table here but what when we you refer to process variable for this transmitter this is the variable that you're looking at okay now the smart pressure transmitter has some internal capabilities that makes it very unique for instance you can go ahead and convert this percentage in a user unit of your desire so when you do this conversion you have the pv when we say just pv process variable means the process variable base it on the user units remember this at this time has nothing to do with pressure or has to do with pressure it's up to you it can indicate volume it could be flow okay it could be height and uh, something else including pressure remember that the, the direct reading for pressure is here okay but pv will be indicating a variable of your interest now from the same pv percentage let's say this has to do with a flow measurement 
and if you're measuring flow maybe you want to do a totalization of the flow and converts how many gallons is passing through a pipe so you can configure the totalizer and uh, we'll keep the variable inside the transmitter while the totalization is done let's say in liters or gallons or cubic feet or something like that okay uh, just as a addendum here if you lose power or something the totalization is not lost it keeps in there and as soon as the power is retrieved it continues building up and finally you can do a PID control on those transmitters you can set your set point go through a PID considering the variable from your process here that is your process variable here do a PID you have how to set up the tuning parameters and then this goes to what we call a manipulated variable in percentage so what really goes out to the transmitter could be the PV in percentage itself could be the manipulated variable if you are using the PID or could be any test value let's say you put the loop for testing you want to simulate a value for the current loop and you can set a value for testing or during commissioning so all this is possible to get out from the transmitter okay very very flexible so at this point it goes to an analog output converter where get these signals convert into current or anything to heart remember when you go to heart is not only these variables you can assess other variables and other parameters inside the transmitter finally when you have this output going to the line there is a couple of different possibilities if you are in a multi-drop situation where your address is 1 to 15 something different from 0 and the PID is not activated your current is going to be fixed in 4 milliamps while anything else can be accessed by heart communication or if you have address 0 or using multi-drop with PID so even if you are in a multi-drop address but you enable the PID your output current is going to be modulated according to the PID output it's not going to be fixed so your current can be sent to a controlling element to control your process okay here is the power and all the capability of the LD301 smart pressure transmitter don't forget if you need more lessons uh, take a look in our channel and I see you later thank you so much